In the last tutorial, we dealt with asynchronous coding in preparation for a discussion on promises. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the problems with callbacks, as they have been, and in many ways, are still the mainstay of asynchronous coding in JavaScript. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Callbacks are used extensively throughout JavaScript, so you need to understand them and understand them thoroughly. However, they do have issues, which is one of the reasons promises were developed. Let's take a look at those issues before our next tutorial where we will introduce promises. So first, problems with callbacks. And I have put these problems in three areas. And in some ways, they are related. But first, callback hell. I'm going to describe what that is. You may have heard this term before when dealing with callbacks. This is probably the most common issue that people have with callbacks, is callback hell. And really, a simple way to describe it is just a bunch of nested callbacks becomes very difficult to work with. Callbacks can be difficult to reason about. This goes with callback hell. If you have a lot of callbacks, that's what makes it difficult to reason about. We'll take a look at an example of that. And then finally, inversion of control. Now, what does inversion of control mean? Well, this is a term that Kyle Simpson talks about quite a bit when callbacks are involved. Now, one of the issues that you can't have with callbacks is you turn control of your program over to something else. For example, if you are using asynchronous coding to connect with a server and to get data, which you would need to do, that control is turned over to something on the server. Or you may be using an API call that uses asynchronous coding, that uses callbacks, and you don't have control of that code. So turning control over your of your code over to something else, that is something that occurs in callbacks. Now, let's take a look at an example that would help illustrate these problems that we have here. So let me jump to Sublime. All right, so first, callback hell. Here I have a callback here, at event listener. When we click on one of those bullet items, this callback, this function here, is invoked. Then inside of that function, we have some additional callbacks. For there's, for example, there's a set timeout here. And then inside of that callback, that calls this function. And notice we set the time to zero, meaning I want to take advantage of asynchronous coding, but I don't want to delay it. So I set the time that that fires to zero. And then inside of that callback function, there is another callback function. So this is an example of callback hell because we have nested callbacks. Now, it's not so much the nesting that makes it difficult. That is a problem. It is more difficult to read the code when it's nested. But also, when you start nesting callbacks, it can be difficult to reason about. I've used pretty straightforward asynchronous coding. So I have an event listener, and then I have some set timeouts. But if you were to try to reason through this code, and what these log, console log statements would produce, that can be difficult to determine. Even when it's your own code. I wrote this code and it initially looking through that, I was trying to reason through what I could expect. So that is difficult to reason about. And that is a symptom of callback hell. Now, even once you reason through this and you figure out, well, I think the second attempt is going to fire first and it should produce an 11 because right here A is set to B and then this first set timeout does adds a 1 to it. But then you're not even certain is this callback function going to happen before this one happens? You're not sure. And even if it does happen a certain way one time, what's the guarantee that it's going to happen that way the next time? Especially if you are doing 
some sort of Ajax call to the server. You cannot be guaranteed of what that return time is going to be. That's an advantage of asynchronous coding because we're not locking our program down while we're waiting for something to return. But it's a disadvantage when using callbacks because we're not certain what order those are going to return in. And if we have more than one callback that's acting on the same state, on the same variable or something like that, then it becomes very difficult to reason about. So really quick, let me just click on that and let's see what we get. So two attempt fires first with 11, then one attempt fires with a 12. Now, if I were reasoning about that, that's probably what I would guess would happen. But I can never be certain. I can never be sure. And that's one of the issues. Finally, we mentioned inversion of control. Now this code doesn't have a really good example of that, but basically the idea there is that many times you are turning your code over to something else. I don't see this as a huge problem, but it is something that Kyle Simpson talks about a lot. So I wanted to include it as one of the issues that we can deal with as we work with callbacks. So callbacks have some issues. And promises have been designed to address those issues. So in the next tutorial, we'll be, we will be looking at promises. They are much easier to reason about. You don't run into the callback hell situation. The nesting is not necessary. And because they're easier to reason about, you're not running into those sorts of issues. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And as I mentioned, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.